Hello viewers, the most dangerous turn one in Gran Turismo history has returned to the game. Monza is back, the Cathedral of Chaos. Let's have a look here at, well, this almighty dive bomb, which actually kind of worked for this guy, whoever he is. But um, let's take another look from another angle. You can see here, this corner does produce quite a lot of chaos, carnage, you name it. Get your thesaurus out and find some words, some superlatives. Because with the new update, bringing the rolling starts closer together, combining that with the tightness and ferocity of turn one at Monza, you're just asking for trouble, really. And let's see if it's about to kick off here on this occasion. As we jump in, we're a P16, decided to not qualify start at the back. And to be fair, this start wasn't too bad. That Mercedes getting the worst of it. And uh, let's say that there was just one victim this time around, which is actually pretty good going for Monza, in my opinion. But let's try to continue here and not dwell on the fact that someone has just been, well, just really done over quite badly in turn one. But it could have been worse for him. So through to uh, turn two, or the Della Roja chicane, as it is actually known. Uh, heading down towards Lesmo 1. Looks like the driver ahead getting themselves a 0.5 second penalty, and that is so easy to do through the aforementioned Della Roger chicane. And uh, I was looking for the penalty zone here. The penalty zone is not here on this game. It is after the Ascari chicane, which is just coming up. So do I decide to try a move on this guy, or do I wait until the penalty zone? I'm going to decide to wait for the time being, as a, he drives wide anyway, so I go past him. Just further up ahead, this guy makes this mistake, slamming into someone else, and then slamming into Barriar, Italian Barriar. As, uh, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna be our first real victim of the wall. As you see, the yellow flag gets waved for that, and we overtake him. And moving up into P12, I was trying to get another move done here, couldn't quite get it done. As we then head down towards Parabolica, the final turn of the famous, could I say infamous, Monza circuit. I'd say it's famous in real life, it's infamous in video games. As uh, we move up into P11, uh, tucking into the slipstream of the Lancer Evolution in front, quite a curious choice for this track given the straight lines needed, uh, sorry, the straight line speed needed around here. See, it's quite lacking at the end of the straight. Late on the brakes, and that was somewhat a dive bomb, um, but we get the job done. And then here was a very weird overtake. This is only really possible in video games and not real life. The infamous ghosted overtake where you go through someone and um, if there are any examples of this happening in real life then please do let me know because I'd, I'd love to see it. I've never actually seen that before. Down the inside quite late on the brakes. In fact I, that was really quite awful. I'm um, looking ahead at these two guys and I'm not sure what happens here but on the back of his car says fair and clean don't hit and then he gets hit great stuff but i luckily capitalize on both of their uh, misfortunes and find myself sitting in p7 which is not too bad given i've only done a lap and a half and i started 16. Uh, so here is the beginning of lap four you can see these guys going really hard at it up against the wall they're not really giving each other much space it must be said. And it's not going to end well for this guy because he misjudges his breaking point by a good 25 metres, I would estimate. And as a result, he's going to lose plenty of positions. I'm going to move up into P6. Sixth place. Incredible. What a meteoric rise so far. Up 10 positions. But I'm thinking that there's more on offer here as we have two cars immediately in front of us. The top three, they're long gone. But fourth place is a real and evident possibility here tucking into the slipstream of ra underscore underscore shadow as we then head towards parabolica for the fourth time on the brakes on the hundred board still on the inside space was afforded to him oh look at that around the outside of parabolica when do you see that, that was incredible stuff he's coming back at me i'm going to move to the inside to cover that move off he's going to have to have the left hand side the outside into the first corner and it's not going to pay dividends for him as he has to back out and I keep fifth 
albeit with a bit of oversteer on the exit, am I able to catch up with P4? Well, no, not quite. I, I was able to defend, or I had to defend, into the Ascara chicane to, to keep my position. And luckily on the exit, the guy behind there, R8 underscore underscore shadow, not getting the exit he would have desired. And ultimately, I finished that in P5, uh, going up 11 positions, which is quite incredible and quite worthy of me being at the top of the Castrol Power Rankings in the Autosport magazine. If I'm not at the top, I'm going to be disappointed. Now, the next race, starting 11th, which really puts me in the firing, uh, firing line of the Monza first chicane. You know, being in the middle of the pack is pretty much the worst place you can be. And I'm roughly the middle of the pack. So let's see as we go in. And um, when I say that there's lots of carnage, I was hoping that it wouldn't be me causing it. But unfortunately, I turned it into a bowling alley and there were lots of victims. And I'm so sorry to all of them. And well, I got a two second sentence for killing someone, which is quite light. Certainly compared to reality, where I don't know what the laws are like in Italy for killing someone. But I'm sure it's more than two seconds. Uh, into the Della Roger, and well, pff, don't think I've taken it any worse in my life. Um, but thankfully, we get through somehow without a penalty and turn our attention to the Ascari chicane where there's someone go going very wide. And I find myself in P7, albeit with an imminent two second prison sentence, which I hereby serve. And then, for good behaviour, they let me out. Well, actually, it wasn't good behaviour, they let me out on time it wasn't early but then coming down towards um parabolica frenchman here just gonna unceremoniously nerf us wide so okay that's the game we're gonna be playing i'm gonna tuck back into your slipstream if you don't mind and go for a revenge move well actually no he let me go he let me go there i almost went to the back of him but um to be fair he actually let me go which is actually really sportsmanlike of him and then del uh del boy there finding his fate in the hands of Italian Barriar, which is never good. And then there's another crash here. And uh, I move up into fifth. So after all this uh, misfortune and misgivings and just lack of ability for, on my own part, I end up fifth. Justice definitely wasn't served there. And uh, we got six positions in that one. So two fifths in a row. I decided to change the livery on the car to uh, distance myself from the white livery I used when I murdered the guy in the last race. And it just so happens that that guy I murdered is the guy right in front of me. So I was really desperate to not murder him for a second time because that would not be, that would not look good really, would it? Heading into the first corner and it turns out that the murderee is now the murderer. So uh, Cool Cat's there with a four second sentence and it was his turn to dish out the punishment. And uh, yeah, so previous race, he's the victim. This one, he is creating victims. And well, the tables have really turned here. In towards the Della Roger, lap number one, lap number one, I was about to say lap number seven. It's only F5 lap race. I'm in P7 though. A couple of cars having all sorts of mayhem behind. Indescribable mayhem. And at the end of the first lap, I begin to catch up with this almighty gaggle of a battle for P2. Is it P2 or P3? One of those. And we're looking up the inside here. I mean, this is going to be dive bomb of the century. And to be fair to that guy, he kind of facilitated it. He could have turned in and not let that happen, but he was very, very kind. And we actually get another move done on the exit. And coming to Della Roger, lap two. Carrying the speed through, not too bad. Trying to catch up with this battle for third. And it looks like, oh, they're battling here into Lesmo 1. Not quite getting the move done. And, you know, when this track flows, when you, you know, when you get in a groove and a rhythm, it's, uh, it's a very rewarding circuit, but it is very difficult to get dead right. And um, especially because of the long straights, any mistake you make through the corners is greatly exaggerated because of the subsequent straights you have to deal with 
and so you really do have to get your exits dead right on this track to be successful around here heading towards the final turn lap number two and I'm I'm firmly in the slipstream of P4 who in turn is in the slipstream of P3 so this could get rather tasty in towards the first corner of the third lap firmly in the slipstream here of 1990s or 1990z and look at that we're gonna firmly got the inside looking for the 150 board which is not that one it's that board boom on the brakes he's gonna try it around the outside but i kind of edge him out usher him wide and say you shall not pass around the outside my good friend this position shall be mine and uh, this is lap number five p4 catching up with the guy in p3 that was lag he was driving a bit weird but uh, maybe the lag gave him a one second sentence i don't know what that was it didn't look like he cut the corner but i guess the lag kind of didn't show exactly where he was going so all i had to do is really just stick close to him and not get a penalty of my own and that's exactly what i did as you can see serving his one second sentence as i fly by and take a podium off of his hands two guys battling on the finish line and i was only three tenths away from winning that race on the line so it's a p3 is a podium i then decided to improve my qualifying lap and i did so by going to a 146.8 which put me fourth on the grid i was moving forward so i was really interested to see could i then move forward from here even and go for the win perhaps that would be the question in towards turn one we're kind of out of that range of the real mid pack which is useful if you have aspirations of not being murdered and as you can see i was not killed as we then progress around um curva grande towards the della roger looking for our breaking point we're gonna kind of send it here and then I kind of, oh, I just had to back out. Thankfully, he just gave enough space. But it unsettled his exit. And I was able to go up the inside into Lesmo 1. So that was a kind of a weird overtake, which took a couple of corners to complete. But nevertheless, I did complete it. Now, sitting here in P3, it was going to take a while to catch up with the top two because they were quick and they had a second or so advantage. But once the leader broke away from P2... Good old Scotty, you should check out his channel if you've not seen it already. Then I began to slowly reel him in. In fact, I was just on the fringes of Slipstream. And I really needed to get this final corner dead right to really get fully within the grasp of Slipstream. But I didn't. I took about the same as him. I wasn't quite in the Slipstream. And so we're going to whip it forward here to... Uh, midway through the lap and I took this chicane beautifully chef's kiss in in the chat in the comment section please as we then head in towards Lesmo 1 and this was a good couple of corners for me and I would say an average couple of corners for him which on average meant I would therefore gain and gain I did as I'm now three tenths behind coming up towards Ascari so we have a good battle on our hands here. So Monza can definitely provide some very good racing. There's no doubt about that. It must be clear though that turn one, it is the center, it is the epicenter of carnage within the realm of motorsport or within the realm of sim racing, I think it's fair to say, or at least Gran Turismo and Forza. Maybe it's a bit more sensible in iRacing, I don't know. Maybe those who play iRacing will have to report back to me in the comments and let me know if it's just as bad. Maybe it is just horrific wherever you go. In towards turn one, catching right up to the back of him, carrying the speed into the turn very nicely, getting a good exit, shifting up into P2, uh, P2 into gear two on the apex to get a nicer drive off the turn. And we are very much into the slipstream here, two tenths behind can we go for this move in towards the second chicane i'm going to go for it late on the brakes and getting towards the apex i've gone a little bit deep but i do manage to get to the second apex without cutting it and so it was a decent move 
didn't turn in, he let it happen. And I'm up into second place. Are we able to get the, uh, the race win here? Probably not, with only a lap and a half to go and a 2.3 second deficit to reduce. I wouldn't say it's possible here. But my main priority at the moment would be to secure P2 and try to pull away from going third now, but it's not quite gonna happen because I'm just gonna make a an error there by one pixel. And unfortunately, it, re it results in a one second penalty. And this was very unfortunate because as we head towards this turn here, sorry, the penalty zone, the guy in front was 1.7 seconds in front and he was serving a penalty of his own. And I, I really feel as though I probably could have challenged him into the final corner if I didn't have my own penalty. So that was deeply frustrating because I'm only two seconds off the lead and I'd say you lost, you lose you lose about that with that penalty so it was very frustrating um so ultimately it's going to be another third position which was i mean i started fourth so i still moved forward but disappointing because i could have won it possibly at least i should have finished second now this one this was a really interesting start because this was the race after you can see here there's an icelandic driver in the lead and you don't normally see many Icelandic drivers in the game it must be said in towards turn one then turn two really courtesy of starting towards the front of the pack you can see how much cleaner it has become it's that region from about fifth to 15th where you're just asking to be annihilated um, but here we're going to force him to the inside at the last moment move to the outside and break a bit later and it was a very strange move <laughs> you be the judge of that i don't get a penalty for it but in my eyes it kind of moved over a little bit late maybe i break a bit too late as well and that caused the contact but it's just a very strange little moment there wasn't a penalty given uh, but we both continue he's gone down to p3 as the icelandic driver and uh, we, we're going to try and pull away here from the Frenchman now in second. And I do exactly that by the end of the race, winning it quite convincingly. And uh, we're going to move quickly to the next one. If you felt as though that, that race we just did there wasn't clean enough, then let's do a properly clean one. Because this one was a good example of consistency. As we head into turn one on pole position, we get through here unscathed, thankfully. And from here, we go on to have a very very solid race in the form of my first lap being a 1 minute 47.5 my second lap being a 147.5 my third lap be uh, being a 147.5 my fourth flying lap being a well, actually there's a guy going backwards here so for some reason but then my fourth flying lap so my fifth actual lap can you can you guess what what, uh, what lap time is going to be that's correct everyone it's going to be a 147.5 look at that unbelievable consistency and we're going to bring home a win nine minutes flat boom job done and hopefully you've been entertained by this video i would assume so because you're still here but thank you so much for watching there's another video please click on it and watch it i'll catch you next time goodbye